Okay, the rise of superstar Billy Graham in the magazines. I, you know, I read on some different social media sites, people looking for superstar Billy Graham's first issue uh, ever appeared on a cover. And it's it was just baffling listening to all the false information being passed around on what his first magazine cover was and people swearing like it was the gospel truth that and and I was just like baffled I was like come on that there's been so much wrong information being passed around I, I need to start making some videos so people actually get the correct information and it was because of this issue is when I first started this channel uh, this is Superstar Graham's first issue January 1971 of the wrestler uh, a lot of these issues are going to be signed because Superstar was you know one of my favorite I wouldn't say wrestler just he was my favorites because he was jacked and he was huge. He wasn't really a good wrestler, um, but he didn't need to be. You know, he was a heel. He, he sold tickets. He looked fantastic, and that's what it took. Uh, this is early, early superstar. This picture was taken sometime in 1970, and you can notice he had he was more of like a hippie here. He has you know the peace signs and the tassels on the on the uh, on the boots. He's got the pair of trunks, not actually the long tights. No tie dye. He's got the beads and the he beaded headband. So it was a totally different look before he became the superstar that we all love. Uh, Superstar's second uh, issue, March. I'm sorry, April of 1972. Inside Wrestling, and again, he's you know got the a robe, which he never wears a robe, and he's it's an American flag robe. He's still got the hippie look going on early uh, 72. October 72, the wrestler. This is a match with him versus John Tolis, and this is signed by Superstar. This is a match he had out in, uh, in the Los Angeles area, the WWA. Uh, now he's starting to change a little bit. The, you know, the tie-dye is on the shorts. He doesn't have the trunks yet, but it's slowly starting to become the Superstar. Here's a match of Superstar in Jap uh, Japan's coverage from Gong. Uh, Indian strap match versus Wahoo McDaniel. Um, this one great uh, coverage of that match in, in this in this issue <clears throat> uh, here's another issue when uh, superstar was in the AWA with Baron um, you know I, I say it a lot but let me just let me show you like what you got with the Japanese issues in 1971 72 um, here is a, a fold poster inside of superstar with Baron um, another color shot they were just, they did it so good. I mean, you just couldn't beat the Japanese issues. Like, you know, I can never say it enough. Uh, here's a, a two page full spread of Superstar here in full color. We just didn't see stuff like this in America. Okay, moving on, his next issue would be uh, The Wrestler 1973. That would be his first bloodied cover. Um, this was also the issue Jack Briscoe won the NWA world title. <clears throat> this is a uh, Inside Wrestling March of 74, and this has got Superstar Graham when he won a 24-man battle royal. Uh, this was a battle royal in Winnipeg, and he, uh, he beat the Crusher uh, for this. Now he's starting to appear on more magazines. He starts to be uh, becoming uh, more and more popular as the years go on and uh, becoming more and more talked about. <clears throat> Man, ask me today, it's it's this issue, ask me tomorrow, it's, you know, September 77, The Wrestler, as my favorite covers, um, I just, just an awesome shot, now you see Superstar, he's got the full trunks, he's, you know, he's still got the, the, the beaded uh, vest, but he's got the cool glasses, and he's got the physique, he's starting to be, he is now the superstar that we all knew, and uh, just a great cover, um, this is always going to be special to me, because this was one of the first I bought from uh, the back issues, and sent away for it, and, uh, you, know, you mail away a dollar or two dollars, whatever it was back then. It, it took almost two months for you to get the issue. You just couldn't wait as a kid for this thing to show up in the ma in the mail. This and the September '77 issue were the two issues that I sent away for first, and so these two are always going to be my special favorites. This one's uh, also signed uh, by Superstar. Another shot of Superstar in '75. In '75 through '77, I think he was his biggest. I mean, his arms are enormous. And look at the size of his arms, like freaking tree trunks, man. It's what a great shot of him posing. It's a bloody shot of, of Superstar October Inside Wrestling 1975. 
another uh, bloody shot of Superstar. Truth or rumor, is Superstar Graham quitting wrestling? Nope, he is not. Here is the uh, first look of Superstar uh, in the Northeast. This is a, a program from Nassau Coliseum. Uh, he didn't appear on this card. Uh, this was just a hype program, letting him know he's in the area and, and that the Superstar is on his way. This is a great cover. I've always loved this shot. This is signed uh, by Superstar Emil and, and Bruno. Um, Superstar out in Times Square, standing on top of a steel concrete uh, trash can on the corner in the city. Um, I, it, it was said that he caused such a, uh, a, 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 a world of people to show up that um, the, the cops came and told him that he had to break it up and get out or he was going to get signed with a ticket. Uh, the swarm of people that's, that followed around um, was backing up traffic. People were getting out of their cars and just running over to see him while he was posing up there and while Bill Apter snagged this great shot. Just an awesome shot. Awesome magazine cover for that time period. Such a uh, nostalgic piece. Next one will be a 1976 annual Superstar Billy Graham. Superstar or Super Bum? You know, what's he going to do? Is he going to be able to beat Bruno San Martino? Who knows? We'll find out. And here is a program from the Garden of January 12th, uh, 1976. And this is the program Superstar faces Bruno for the first time in the Garden for the title. The next uh, couple of magazine issues are going to be Superstar and, and uh, Bruno from that match that the program we just looked at. And this is, uh, this is signed by both guys. Another shot that's on the wrestler, uh, May of 76. Superstar and Bruno both signed it as well. Also made it on the cover of Wrestling Training Illustrated, which is also the premier issue of Wrestling Training Illustrated, uh, June of 1976. I'm not going to show every magazine Superstar was ever on because it would be like a four-hour video. I'm just going to show the ones where they showcase Superstar on the cover, uh, where it's predominantly just him. Um, otherwise, like I said, we'd never have an ending video here. It'd be, it would go on forever. Um, uh, Superstar boasts, look what I did to Bruno San Martino. And yes, he made a big impact that night against Bruno. And of course, we all know what was coming next. Superstar Graham would, wins the WWF title from Bruno San Martino. Uh, got this one signed uh, by Bruno. Also, I'm sorry, by Superstar. Also, I couldn't get Bruno to sign it. I just, I know it's stupid. I felt guilty. I was like, you know, it's the magazine he lost. I can't bring it to him. I just, it hurt me to see him lose as much as I like Superstar winning the belt. I just couldn't have him sign it. <laughs> And here is September 77. It was what an awesome looking cover, man. It just doesn't get any better than this. You know, he's jacked up. He's got the bell. He's got the, the you know, the mean look on his face. This was the uh, second issue that I sent away for that I was saying earlier. Uh, two of them, my, my favorite superstar covers for sure. Next issue have been June 77. Superstar and Bruno both signed. Uh, and Bruno, uh, Bruno's belt looks good around my waist, and yes, it does. He certainly showed it off well, that's for sure. Every chance he got, he was always posing with that belt and always looked awesome with it. Uh, just a continuing on of the Bruno and uh, Superstar feud. Here is a garden program of Superstar's first uh, match as champion, and that was May of 1977 uh, at the garden versus... Um, Gorilla Monsoon. Uh, this is a uh, program of Superstar and uh, and Bruno uh, with Monsoon as the guest referee. It's also Backlund's first appearance. That's what I was trying to think. Yeah, this is Bob's first appearance in, at the Garden. Uh, this was the one that was stopped due to too much blood. And here is a cover shot of that match. You can see they're both bloodied up. It's just a cool looking signed magazine by both guys. And also another shot from that match where you see Superstar just bloodied up. Another shot of Superstar and Bruno feuding together. These next couple are going to be Superstar posing pretty much on the covers. <clears throat> and this is Wrestling Superstars, October 77. It's just a great looking magazine cover. He's got the blue tie-dye with the powder blue background. And it's just you know, a really cool looking magazine. 
another one of December 77, The Wrestler. It kind of annoyed me when he put this little picture of Wahoo and Flair there to cut the belt off. I love any kind of a cover that has a belt on the cover. And, uh, but it's nonetheless, it's a great looking magazine that's also signed by Superstar. Always love this issue of Sports Review, August 77, with Superstar Graham looking like a gypsy with the headband and the tie-dye and the jacked up arms, man. It's just a cool looking mag. August 77 Wrestling Superstars, kind of the same kind of a look as the previous. Now we're going to get into a couple of Superstars feuds with different wrestlers when he was defending the title. And uh, this is Fall 77 Yearbook, Andre's shocking message to Superstar Graham. I don't want your title, I want you dead. <laughs> and just another shot of Bruno, I'm sorry, not Bruno, uh, Andre and Superstar together where he's standing on top of uh, Superstar's stomach and chest, crushing him with all 400 pounds of him. And uh, yet another shot with Andre the Giant has Andre destroyed Superstar Graham. <clears throat> Here we get into the Ivan Putsky feud, and they had run quite a few issues, if I remember correctly. Um, this was December 77, uh, Inside Wrestling. And uh, another Inside Wrestling cover of Superstar and uh, Ivan Putsky. Another Inside Wrestling, November 77 with Ivan. April 79 of Sports Review with Ivan. Wrestling's Greatest Brattles, it's uh, spring of 78 with Ivan. Winter 78, uh, I believe this is the last issue with uh, Putski with, with that feud. Here we got uh, Superstar Graham on March of 78 uh, facing Peter Maivia. Wrestling Yearbook, uh, 1977, and it shows all three world champions on the cover with their belts. <clears throat> it's a great photo. I used to love these uh, th three champion covers, and I never had got a chance to meet Nick Bockwinkle, so I never got it signed by Nick. But uh, this would be the, uh, the beginning look of Superstar and Harley uh, getting ready to face off. And here it is, the Super Bowl of wrestling, Superstar Graham, Harley Race, NWA versus WWWF. This is signed by Superstar Harley and also Bruno at the bottom. This was an awesome uh, feud, awesome match. Wish they did more of that kind of stuff back then. And pretty self-explanatory. Another shot of those two autographs on the cover of Sports Review, May of 78. Another issue of May of 78, Inside Wrestling, and it's signed by both guys. And uh, the uh, Superstar has got a full bloody shot on the cover. We have uh, Sports Review Annual 78. This is signed by Superstar Harley, uh, Meal, and also Bob on the cover. Here's the Japanese coverage of this match. Um, anybody who's a fan of this match, I highly recommend you get this issue. This was put out by Gong, 1978 USA Championship Wrestling issue. Um, if I can try to show you a couple pics of the inside, it's just absolutely awesome. Um, the color photos that you get from this. This is a poster. If I can get the whole shot in there of, of him and Neil. Um, bear with me a sec. Here's a shot. Uh, just an awesome color shot before the match began. Here is a shot of the of the arena. Of course, it was in a ball field. I'm not going to show them all. Just to, you know, a little bit to show you how awesome these color photos were on this slick, glossy paper. They really did it right. Nothing like this was released for our U.S. fans here. It's just an incredible shot. I mean, that could have been a poster. It's Harley in the back uh, backbreaker. Harley Race getting the first fall. Another great shot. This could be also be a poster. I mean, look at that close up. Just awesome. Uh, showing them maybe one or two more. There's a superstar. A great bloody shot. Almost like the cover we just saw a few minutes ago. Um, superstar getting suplexed. What an awesome shot that is. Just incredible. I, I, just, I can't say enough about the Japanese coverage. Wow, I forgot about this picture in here. Superstar holding the belt up at the end of the match. Nice color shot nice bloody shot of superstar harley standing over him i'll just show one more here's harley um 
Oh, he's grabbing the belt off the timekeeper's uh, table at the end of the match. Um, just an awesome shot. You know, the expression on his face, that moment encapsulated forever in this magazine. Just, uh, just awesome. So, yeah, anyone who's a fan uh, of that match or that feud or either guy, um, get this magazine. I mean, you're going to pay a little bit for it, but it's worth it. What I mean by a little bit, um, I don't know. A hundred, definitely a hundred, 125, 140, depends on the, on the seller. It's pretty rare and it's not up very often, but that's what separates, you know, my collection from somebody else's, I guess, you know, it just depends on what you want to spend for stuff. <clears throat> okay. So now we get into the feud with, uh, Dusty Rhodes and man, these guys had a huge, huge feud. They were on the cover of every magazine, uh, ever published, um, this is a shot uh, that set up their bull rope match or their uh, cowbell match, however you want to call it. Um, th this was their first meeting and uh, Superstar was getting choked out uh, with the rope. And here you see the cowbell uh, attached to the rope for their return match. I'm going to go through these kind of quick because there's so many of them, I think. And there's another good shot with the cowbell that busted open Superstar's head. Very similar shot to the last on the wrestler January 79. Uh, another issue superstar signed. I believe this is at the uh at the Philly uh match. I'm pretty sure I remember him wearing the blue trunks in Philly. Superstar and Dusty again on the wrestling picture book summer of 78. And this one, could you imagine, you know, living in another state, say, you know, out in the Mid-Atlantic, and you go to the newsstand and see this, and you think Dusty Rhodes won the WWF title, and he, he didn't. Uh, what a great shot. I mean, the fan runs into the ring for literally three seconds and hugs Dusty, and it looks like, you know, he belongs with him. You know, he's, he's got the cigarette hanging off of his lip. And that, that, that three seconds he's in the ring, he's encapsulated forever on the cover of a magazine, hugging Dusty Rhodes with the belt. I mean, wow, what a lucky dude. And wrestling yearbook, another shot of Superstar and Dusty. Wow, I didn't realize it was this many. Uh, another one signed by Superstar. And that's that's it for that feud. Christ. Um, this is, I think he has had a couple of house shows with uh, Tony Gurria defending the title. This is Spring of 78 Wrestling Picture Book. This is uh, Wrestling Greatest Battles Fall 77 with Gurria. Uh, this gets us into, towards the end, uh, his feud with Mascaris was towards the end of his run as champion, and uh, this has got some uh, great coverage uh, of it in this issue. Like, I showed you all the color before. There's no different in the, uh, any of these issues. They're all color, and they're all great, great magazines. Um, <clears throat> here's a shot of those two wrestling on the cover of Gong, uh, February 1978. And the American coverage of... Best of the Wrestler, and that's Winter, excuse me, Winter 80. And a Wrestler, April 78. <clears throat> this is Sports Review. Greatest Battles. I always like this. He's trying to take Mill's mask off, and I remember always trying to get a closer look to see if I could see anything that resembled any kind of a person, but never could. Uh, that's Summer 79, Greatest Battles. And we get into Superstar losing the title. Uh, I don't. I didn't bring any of those out because I, it's depressing. I don't like when Backlund became champion. Nothing against Backlund. He was a great wrestler. I just wasn't my wasn't my choice for a, a world champion, especially for the Northeast. You know, we kind of like a different kind of a guy up here. And uh, you know, Bob really just you know didn't really get over that great with the fans up here. Um, but, I mean, nothing against him. The guy had some fantastic matches, especially in the early 80s, man. He had some awesome battles. But uh, this would be his uh, first cage match with Superstar. Trying to win his title back. And this has also got the collar coverage of it in the issue of Gong, June of 78. And uh, this was from the Philly Spectrum. Here he is now since lost the title and move, moving on. This would be May 79 <clears throat> with his uh, brother, Crazy Luke. That's also signed by Superstar. Kind of looking like Jesse Ventura here with the uh, three quarters of the bald head with the uh, with the beard now. 
And uh, this is signed on a cover of June 80 of Sports Review. Now with the fully headed, shaved head against uh, Bruno San Martino for a uh, old feud rekindled, and that was happening down in Houston. Uh, Superstar is not in this issue. Uh, this was signed by Bob, but it has the strange reappearance of Superstar Graham. And you can imagine, you know, my 13 year old mind racing to get to the pages where I could see Superstar inside knowing he was back because at the time he was rumored to be dead and no one even knew he was still alive and uh, we open it up and we find this inside and he's got the shaved head with the mustache still with the tie-dye he's still jacked up with the muscles and it was like oh my god it's so awesome and he's facing uh, Bruiser Brody and uh, that would be him after his death uh this is a program from that match i'd open it up and show you it, it, it took me 20 years to find this uh and i don't even want to tell you what i went through to get it um but this was the program the night uh superstar made his comeback and he faced bruiser brody in houston on a sunday january 3rd 1982 and this is the program to that event <clears throat> And there's a great write-up in there about Superstar coming back and, and all that kind of stuff. It's a, it's an awesome uh, program, at least I feel anyway. Um, Superstar now back on the cover of the magazines after his absence, and he's going to make another run with Backlund at the Garden. And this is his first full cover. Uh, not really digging that mustache and the karate gimmick uh, at all, but, you know, it's Superstar. So in a way, you know, it's kind of still drawn to the guy. Uh, here he is in the garden, one of three uh, appearances at the garden in a row with Bob. And this is the uh, the program to uh, that event. He also, on his way down, was uh, going against Pedro Morales for the Intercontinental title, Inside Wrestling March of 83. And he would leave the WWF and have a great run with Billy Jack in the Florida Championship Wrestling. This is signed by Billy Jack and Superstar. This is, I got a, a bunch of these here of Billy Jack and Superstar. Uh, he would actually win the Florida title from Billy Jack and uh, regain a title for the first time since holding the belt. There's another shot. This is a Billy Jack Superstar and Road Warrior Animal signed October 1984 inside wrestling. Here is a Grapevine program of uh, Superstar and Billy Jack, the night Superstar won the title back. I'm sorry, won the title. Yeah, he won it back. This was his second time as Florida champion. And here is the next Grapevine issue. Superstar Graham wins the Florida title. Grapevine where it was the uh, Florida Championship Wrestling's uh, program. Uh, this was particular event was for uh, Tallahassee, uh, June 22nd. And uh, the main event was huh, Superstar Graham versus Dusty Rhodes for the Florida title. Superstar had a great feud with Billy Jack, and they had, had some arm wrestling competitions, and this is another grapevine of just Superstar and, and Billy in 84. Billy Jack after the Florida title, and this was another grapevine with some stories of Superstar and Billy Jack. And once again, with Billy Jack. So you see Superstar's back on the cover a lot. Um, it was a great feud, a great bloody feud down in Florida, and it sold a lot of magazines. Um, yet another shot of Superstar. Here's Superstar on a, on a cover of a Canadian uh, wrestling uh, federation uh, in Canada. Um, yeah, okay, we're getting to the end of the line. I thought I had a few more, but um, this is a grapevine uh, when Superstar ditched the karate uniform and uh, broke back all the color and the tie-dye. And this is another grapevine issue from uh, Championship Wrestling from Florida. And this actually, I'm sorry, this is, yeah, this is a program with him versus the Purple Haze. And here he is on the cover of Championship Wrestling uh, with a bloodied Purple Haze, who is Mark Lewin, by the way. And this is uh, Superstar. They're talking about, you think I have a lot of wrestling magazines from my collection. You should see my movie collection. I have just under 8,000 films on every format imaginable from beta DVD, VCD, uh, mini DVD, um, you name it, I have it, Laserdisc. And uh, I knew about Superstar becoming uh, an actor for the first time, and he was going to be in a movie called Zombie Nightmare. And the movie was released, but Superstar was never in it. And I never heard anything about it. When I bought Zombie Nightmare on Blu-ray a number of years ago, the extra uh, credits uh, on the bonus features 
uh, the director was talking that I had this wrestler, superstar Billy Graham, who was going to play the part of uh, the zombie. And in this magazine is all behind the scenes of him getting in his costume made and the mask. And he went through the pour of the cast for his mask that he was going to be wearing. And uh, when it came time for shooting, <laughs> the guy says I was all smoked up with, with some dope and I totally forgot. I, I passed out and left Superstar Graham sitting in the airport. So he said, you know, I never had any contact with him again. I guess he just got the next flight and left because when we got to the airport, they said, you know, there was a guy here and he left and he got on another flight and took off. And uh, he never made the movie. So he left Superstar sitting in the airport, which was uh, I thought was funny. But um, so he never was never made it into a film. He actually did make it onto a film one called uh, Fist Fighter. And he is a uh, he's an arm wrestling champion and he was arm wrestling the star of the movie uh in some bar scene so i think that was like his only film he was ever in was just a five minute scene where he got beat up uh, when he was arm wrestling and uh superstar's final issue uh ever appearing on a cover was in january 1988 this is a back locker room shot after the match of superstar graham versus uh, johnny rods this took place in the bronx new york in the south bronx and if anyone knows about the south bronx up here it is a heavily Puerto Rican Latin area. And a superstar said <clears throat> that uh, the Puerto Ricans were in wild fury that night. And whenever I would hit rods or beat up on rods, they were throwing shit at me. They were booing the hell out of me. So he said, I told rods, to, he better to go ahead and, and go over in this match. Because if I win, I'm never going to get out of here alive. So he gave the match to rods. Rods won the, uh, won the uh, match that night. And the fans went crazy. And... Uh, Rods was very appreciative for Superstar letting him go over that night. And this is just a back room shot of that night. And that's also his last full cover uh, of the Superstar before his retirement. All right, man, there it is. Superstar Graham, the rise of Superstar to the end in the magazines. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next.